So tell us what your uh, love life was like before we worked together. Gosh. So I started the program with Barry in, I believe it was, it was 2021. And I had moved from uh, Bozeman, Montana. I'd finished graduate school and had started teaching in a small town in Idaho. And I, I had dated somebody and it didn't work out. And then COVID happened and it was really challenging to meet people and just having a lot of doubts about where I was and what I was doing and, and dating. And uh, I found Barry through an ad on, it was, uh, it was through YouTube. And, right. and I was like, well, I don't know, like maybe I'll just give it a shot. And I was, I was definitely a little skeptical at first. And I remember talking with her in that first uh, interview and I was like, well, like, how do I know you're real? I've never <laughs> heard of you before. And, and, uh, and she like referred me to the New York times articles. And I was just, I was really fascinated with, with the process. And, and I'm really into psychology and self-development and, and I'd been through a lot of counseling and through ACOA as well. And, um, had experienced some personal trauma, like when I was really young and, um, and, and so like going through the process with Barry, it was a really helpful for me and being able to really address things at the root of the problem. And, and as somebody, I remember somebody in a class that I was sitting in on, she'd said that, oh, Barry's like a psychological surgeon she has like a scalpel and she's just going in there and I was like oh my gosh that's a great analogy that's what that's exactly what Barry's doing and uh, and so uh, it was uh, going through that process and I also remember reading um I'd found a book by Desmond Tutu and I'm sure you've seen his book on um reconciliation that he wrote with his daughter yeah and uh, I remember that was really helpful for me because it gave me the power back and Barry, like everything that Barry teaches is about you taking the power back and you no longer being a victim and you setting the stage for what you want in your relationship and the mantras are, and, and being specific about what you want in your mantras and I'm pretty sure Barry wrote the majority of my my profile when <laughs> I finally put it on match. But I mean, she definitely QC'd it, a lot of it. And that made a huge difference. And um, but I feel like through the process of the whole first part of um, um the 90 day days of work were just a uh, removing a lot of and addressing a lot of the the past trauma. And then the next part was actually living that out in your life in an everyday setting and um, in a learning how to date people and create your pipeline. And, um, and it, yeah, it's, it's definitely challenging, like setting out lots of messages and maybe you hear back from one or two people out of 10 and then trying to get them actually on the phone is another thing. But for me, if people didn't want to talk on the phone, it was a sure indicator that it wasn't going to work because I needed somebody who was enough of an adult and enough able to recognize that to have a mature relationship, we need to communicate. And so through all of that process, I also opened up myself to the possibility of dating people that well, so I'm 40 now and I was going through the process when I was 38. And uh, um, so I was a lot more open to, became a lot more open to dating men that had kids. And um, so that was a huge part of my process. And initially I wasn't open to that, but through a lot of Barry's work, I became more open and that was really powerful for me is because I met somebody that I, well, so I think being a father, like it really changes being a parent changes you a lot. And, um, my, all of my terrible 
experiences and dating men made me, I was like, okay, maybe being a father like changes something or does something. And I was like, okay, we'll just like give it a go. And, um, and I, I've been on a lot of dates. So, um, it was so a process. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you so much for all. That. Yeah. yeah. What was the biggest change within you? Yeah. Within you that made it possible because then we're going to talk about what actually happened where you are. Right. Now. What was the biggest change you noticed from doing the work? I think the values at, and it like at a cellular level, like knowing through and through that you were worth so much more than what you've put out there in the past yes. and knowing what your values are makes everything so much easier. Yeah. And I was, I was so exhausted and tired of being of the, like you are dating somebody for a while and then they don't know what they want. Like Barry, you said like finding safe, secure love. And a, somebody who's a, willing to emotionally bond. I don't, I don't remember the words that you used for it. The attachment. Right. Like right. secure attachment. Right. And, like I never, I just, like I never knew about that. So right. I was like, I think I'd been like for years, I'd been shopping thinking I was going to make some like super yummy, like oatmeal, <laughs> like chocolate oatmeal cookies and I kept buying the wrong chocolate chips. So they were never like that good. And so Barry helped me find the right chocolate chips. So. <laughs> uh, so tell everyone now what happened. What was the greatest outcome? Tell us about what you discovered about your relationship, how it turned out. Yeah. So we, we ended up meeting. And so I'd been teaching high school and this, I'll, I share this because it's kind of multi-pronged and, in life as it goes. And so I'd been teaching high school for about three and a half years. And I met Eric through match. And I'm pretty outdoorsy. And I love to climb and ski and run. And I came across uh, his profile and, um, and he was like, I'm definitely a science nerd. And he was like, had talked about how I think like he had an engineering theory and he had pictures of his kids and um, but had some pictures of climbing with his kids as well. And we went on the first date and had gone climbing and went and got food. And we talked on the phone before that. And, and he seemed really open and friendly and really approachable. And so that was a good sign for me. And then um, the first date went really well. And I was like, I, I felt comfortable and, um, and I felt like we could talk about different things. And, and then um, the next day, like, we ended up, um, they, because we live probably an hour and a half from each other at that time we did. And um, we met up for like a weekday evening run. And, uh, and I was like, oh, I wish we lived closer. Like, it'd be fun to just go for a run and we can like hang out and talk and, and he was like, well, we can do that. Like, he's like, I'll come drive to meet you. And I was like, really? I mean, it's in the middle of the week and I'm sure you have stuff going on. And he's like, oh yeah, no, it's fine. Like, let's go meet. And uh, he was super sweet. And, um, and then uh, he ended up, so we were together for like probably two months or so. And then Meanwhile, like I had during this time, like I joined the Air National Guard and like yeah. I had to leave for training. And so I was in Montgomery for a month and a half in Alabama. And then I was back for a couple months and we got to like we got to spend more time together. And I met his kids more. I met his kids before I left. But we had we shared a lot of common interests like on the outdoor side and also just values around um, having a like a spiritual relationship and um, being part of the church, and that was important to both of us. And and um, so that was that was huge. And then and then I had I had to leave again for six months in Texas, and he came every month and visited me for a week. And wow. he can work 
remotely. And every time he visited, like we would go and do something else. Like we'd go run a road race or like go and um, like go backpacking in Big Bend. And um, it was, it was super special and he was just really committed. I could see from, from all of that. And, um, and then I got back in, let's see, it was last October and he like drove me back and we celebrated my 40th birthday on the way back with some friends in Moab, Utah on the way. And, um, but just like really committed in being there for me and like rearranging his whole schedule and being like being a part-time parent, like, well, full-time parent, but like shared 50, 50. And, um, and then, um, and then in November, of 2023 at the end of November he proposed and that's the picture Barry just shared at the ski resort so yeah what really stood out is what you said you made such a heartfelt post that I'm gonna share I think it's shared in the group but you said I didn't know men like Eric existed right yes yeah and like I wanted it to be a heartfelt and sincere because I want everyone else who's having that level of doubt that I had know that there are really sweet guys out there <laughs> and like Barry and everyone who's you know found somebody knows that to be true and and like I really do believe that there's someone for everyone you just like being proud and who you are is a huge part of finding that person Right, exactly. And so how do you feel now? So I didn't know a person like that existed. And now he's doing I remember in the beginning, like, who's gonna do all these adventures with me? How will I find someone like that? And someone who shares my, you know, my religious values. So how does it feel now to be with someone like that who sees you who prioritizes you who gets you? How does that feel? Yeah, it's been, it's definitely been in transition. And, um, and to be honest, at first, it was a little, it was a little scary and a little uncomfortable, because it was new and so different. And I wasn't used to that. And I felt like it wasn't, I'm like, like, is this, is this right? Because (laughs) (laughs) so... I think that's common if you don't know what is healthy. It is. It is so common. And for those of you who are watching this, that is the most uncomfortable thing for most people who find healthy love. It's so uncomfortable. It's so, will the shoe drop? Will the ball drop? Right? We're so not used to it. We have a client, Kathy Matthews. She is such a loving, good man who sees... And she just didn't know uh, it was so, so uncomfortable. But now that you've settled in and you're engaged, how does it feel now? Yeah, it's a, it feels stable and secure. And I know that he's going to be there for me when things are challenging. And, um, and I'd like through thick and thin, I know that like my parents are getting older and he's, you know, he's actively like trying to find a time when we can both go next, see them and try and help them like put in, install a few things around the house. And so it it feels like a relief and, and I feel like we're able to focus on the rest of our lives and, and what we want to plan next together and um, what the next thing is and how we want to grow together and what that looks like. Right, right. Isn't it fun to plan? Yeah, it's it's super exciting. And yeah, it's a work in progress for sure. And it's, uh, yeah, but we're both, uh, we both have a lot of different ideas and ranges from like starting a climbing gym at some point. And we're both very health and wellness focused. And um, but yeah, it's exciting. So yeah, it's good. It's good, right? So, yeah. yeah. Keep yeah. your head up. And yeah, it's a great program. I would definitely recommend it. Yeah, that was my next question. So everyone here has been in a workshop for the last uh, eight days or so. 
and they've been learning about it and what we've been learning in the program about how repelling love and opening up and it's a learnable skill, right? And it's scary. We're used to being in our comfort zones and the idea of receiving love, like, is that really possible? Because if we've never had something, then how are we supposed to find it? How are we supposed to even recognize it, right? But through our dating, right. we do. So yeah. what do you tell them? Some people are like, oh, investing in love. Shouldn't I know this? Investing money, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is that um, just learning the process to to trust yourself and the uh, um, – and, and, and to know that, like, I feel like I started to evolve a sense of, like, what is a berry and meat to marry healthy? <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, what is, uh, what was my prior state of perceiving what healthy was? And, um, and those are two totally different things. And, and I guess the other thing for me too, because I was very concerned about, the cost and like I saw just somebody just text that and I feel like having been a teacher it was challenging at the time but now that I'm on the other side of it and I've done the work and made the investment I I totally feel like it was it was worth it because it just reshapes your whole perspective and opening your mind end up to different opportunities and and there there are good men that are out there and they want to be part of your life like teacher and mom thing um yeah. so just know that right right no of course and now she found her man they'll get married they're gonna have a whole life together because without that right where would you be yeah i mean and uh, like if that's what you want that's like that's one thing but i knew that i wanted to find a partner and um i'm really excited about evolving our lives together and what's next so oh well yeah. we're for you mike and i were watching we're seeing your pictures we're so excited for you so oh thank you, thank you. so much for sharing yeah yeah yeah